What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is my second channel, and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this, and you wanna see more of that, and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. All right, so a lot of people have asked me about my opinion on this album, Glow On by Turnstile. I don't typically do reviews, but this is one that felt like something I should talk about. A lot of people asked me about it, so I thought I would. It's pretty interesting because they're one of these bands that for whatever reason gets a ton of attention and praise from outlets that normally don't touch hardcore at all don't care about or think about hardcore for example pitchfork right here which gave it an 8.4 fantano gave it i think an 8 or something like that which is really good and he does talk about some hardcore but not not a ton you know he's not going to be talking about tsunami and gulch and stuff like that so i think it's kind of interesting how they've become this band that sort of gets love from a section of the music media or section of culture in general that normally wouldn't touch this stuff. And so rather than just do a straightforward review of it, although I will talk about my opinion on the album, I thought it'd be more helpful for me to kind of give some context around it so we can maybe kind of understand why they fill that slot and what's next for them. Also kind of give you maybe a little bit of color around what they're doing from a musical perspective that I think a lot of people don't seem to really be aware of. My reaction to this album, uh, is that I think it is good. I think they executed very well on what they set out to do. I think an eight is a really fair score for it. Personally, it's probably not the one that I'm going to listen to the most because it's a little bit more in the indie kind of direction than that I'm interested in. I want them to be a hardcore band, and I understand why they have kind of moved on from that a little bit. Um, but I think they're doing it really well. It's clear to me that this is sort of where they've been heading for years, right? I mean, if you paid attention to them from the beginning, then you would probably know this. They keep getting kind of weirder and more indie on every album. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I totally understand. I mean, what are you going to do? Make fucking hardcore albums for 10 years with no experimentation? Like, nobody wants that to happen. What I do find kind of interesting is that a lot of the media attention on them, I guess, talks about them in a way that sort of implies that they're doing something really groundbreaking and new and different that's never been done before in hardcore. And that's really not true at all. To me, what they're doing is the same thing that a lot of the like East Coast, especially New York hardcore bands did in the late 80s and early 90s when they sort of stopped playing uh, hardcore and started playing alternative rock, basically. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying like, oh, Turnstile is just ripping off Orange 9mm, because I don't think they are. I think they add something new to it. But looking at it from that perspective of like, oh, this is actually just the new incarnation of what all those hardcore bands did in the early 90s, I think sort of frames their music differently than if it's some sort of wildly experimental thing that nobody's ever done before, because that's just not the case. And I think the reason why people don't know that is because, you know, that was a long time ago. It really wasn't popular or particularly successful. I think that people are just not really aware that that kind of already happened in hardcore. So I just thought it would sort of fill in the gaps there, take a walk through their discography, and then show how they got to where they are and sort of talk about the influences and context around that so it might make a little bit more sense to you. Let's talk about the history of Turnstile. They came out in 2010 or 2011 or so with this 7-inch, which I think is fucking great. This song is just a fucking banger hardcore song. And they were originally a spinoff of the band Trapped Under Ice. The singer of turnstile is the drummer of trapped under ice who i think are kind of sort of act i'm not sure if they're active right now or not but this is the band that he was in actually let's let's play this i think this was the this was the more of the song that broke him out If you are a old hardcore person like me, you will recognize that Trapped Under Ice is essentially picking up where Crown of Thorns left off. Let's put it that way. And, and we know that's true because the singer of Trapped Under Ice has a Crown of Thorns tattoo here. It says Mentally Vexed, which is a Crown of Thorns song. But I'm not saying they're Crown of Thorns ripoff, but I mean, as we know from that tattoo, they're heavily inspired by Crown of Thorns, which is like classic 90s hardcore band. I did an interview with uh, Isaac Danny Diablo, the singer. So 
So that's a little background on where they came from. Trapped Under Ice was this hype hardcore band back then. So when Turnstile came out as a side project of Trapped Under Ice, they got a lot of hype. And I think for good reason, because this song is fucking amazing. This song is fucking awesome. 10 out of 10 hardcore song. So that is the beginning of Turnstile. And back then, I think people just sort of thought of them as the Trapped Under Ice spinoff. It wasn't even clear that they were like a serious band that was going to play shows or like just seemed like it was a one off thing. But everybody loved it and they kind of kept going. They pretty quickly walked away from kind of just straightforward hardcore. Their next album, Nonstop Feeling, they had an EP also, but their album, Nonstop Feeling, which is actually my favorite thing that they did, was kind of where they started to do the uh, what what my friend uh, calls funky core, where they started getting a little bit more kind of into the alternative rock sort of thing. Before I play that, I want to play you something that sort of on the topic of their influences and where they're coming from, I think it's helpful to kind of understand that what they're doing is basically a reinterpretation of, of what uh, a lot of older New York hardcore bands have done. Again, I'm not saying they're ripping them off or that they haven't, you know, added anything new because I think they have, and I think they're better songwriters than almost all those bands. But stylistically, I think it's helpful to understand where they're coming from. For example, their early stuff is like very clearly inspired by Leeway. Shout out to Eddie Leeway, the legend who is currently undergoing treatment for cancer right now. So let's all give him our best. I love this band. I mean, listen to how much this sounds like Turnstile. So I would say that the early incarnation of Turnstile was kind of, you know, basically a reinterpretation of Leeway. This album, they sort of walked away from doing straightforward hardcore and started to get a little bit more into alternative rock. This is probably my favorite Turnstile song overall, I think. Definitely my favorite of this era. I love this drum sound. I like this song a lot too, and the video. And I'll talk about their aesthetics in a minute, because I think that's a huge part of why they're having success where other bands don't. So this is kind of their funky core era, you could call it. And I think this is around the time that their other sort of sister band, Angel Dust, really started to become more of a thing around here. This is a, a later song, but I think of Turnstile sort of like this. There's Trapped Under Ice, which is just straightforward hardcore. Angel Dust is weird shit. And Turnstile is kind of right in the middle and they share some of the same members. So to me, they're sort of all related. <laughs> This is Angel Dust. I like that song a lot. I like the more punky Angel Dust stuff. Lately, they've just gotten into like super weird indie rock, which is not my thing, but I appreciate it just that they're doing weird shit. So pick somebody I miss. You know, so Angel Dust is not my thing. Uh, at least the newer stuff. But I do think it's helpful to kind of think about that as sort of the bookends of Turnstile that you've got Trapped Under Ice, Angel Dust, and Turnstile sort of in the middle of those two things. The next album they came out with is called Generator, which is where I think they really found the alternative rock lane that they're in now, like hardcore influenced alternative rock, such as this song, which I don't really like very much, but I think is a good example of how weird they got. Wearing a battery shirt, that's cool. It's not for me, 
but I appreciate that they're doing weird shit that's different. I think that's a big part of their success. Again, the aesthetics, which I'll talk about more later, but this is a weird video sitting on this like moon here. The song is weird. I mean, just the fact that they're doing different shit. I mean, it's still alternative rock, so it's not, there's nothing super new here, but in the context of hardcore, it's different to the, to an audience that has never really heard this kind of post hardcore this feels really different, and I do respect that they're taking chances. As far as all the media love that they get, although as though this is something that's like never been done before, it's really not true. I'm going to play some stuff here from the 90s that really, to me, is what they're drawing from. Again, I don't know if they're actually influenced by these bands or not. Uh, I'm sure they know who they are, but these are all like super legit New York hardcore bands or people from super legit New York hardcore bands that went on to do something a little bit more alternative rock. For example, this band Black Train Jack which was started by uh, some guys from Token Entry and maybe some other bands I'm not remembering. And this is from 93, I think. Another example that sounds very turnstile to me is Shelter, which was Ray and Porcel from Youth of Today. Porcel was also in Judge. Sammy from Judge was in the band. Uh, Franklin from Crown of Thorns was in the band at this era. Mackie from Cro-Mags was in the band around this time. I mean, Shelter's had people from like every New York hardcore band at some point or another. And I hear a lot of Turnstile in this. This album has really fucking great lyrics, by the way, if you're into this. Another example of that would be Handsome. This band is very, very, very underrated. This band is fucking awesome. I saw them in 97 with Descendants and Guttermouth of all bands. One of the heaviest fucking bands I've ever seen. And I think you will hear a lot of Turnstile in this too. The drumming on this is so fucking good. This is like a very Turnstile part to me. Later leeway stuff also sounds a lot like turnstile. Snapcase is very, very, very turnstile. Listen to that fucking snare. You could literally put this out as a turnstile song and people believe you. Shout out to Steve Evitz for recording this. I'll play you a couple more of these bands. This is from 1990, for example. The vocals are a little bit rough, but this is like straight up turnstile funky core era, like nonstop feeling era. Yeah, not the world's best recording. One band that really doesn't get any credit from back then, somebody mentioned them in the chat earlier, Orange 9mm, which is one of the very first like post-hardcore bands. These are guys from Burn and Absolution and a bunch of other like super legit 80s, early 90s New York hardcore bands. And they were one of the first bands to really go like post-hardcore. That's what they called this back then, post-hardcore slash alternative rock. And again, I think you'll hear a lot of turnstile in this. Turnstile puts a lot of indie rock sound in their music that none of these bands do. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying that Turnstile is like a ripoff of these bands. Like I said, I think they have added a lot of new stuff, like on the new album in particular. But I do want to just sort of make everyone aware that this sort of uh, alternative rock kind of funky sort of sound is, is definitely not anything new. And it's okay if it's not new. The most important thing is if they're happy doing it, if it's good, which I think it is, and if people like it, that's what's important. If you like what Turnstile is doing, you should be aware that there's like a ton of this shit from the late 80s and early 90s that coming out of the New York hardcore scene that you should also check out because you might like it. To me, like Turnstile is really just picking up where these bands left off. Speaking of the uh, sort of indie rock stuff and what they've done with the new album. I want to play you a couple of these songs. Anthony Fantano's 
video uh, review of this. I think he called it like Dream Core or Dream Punk or something, which I think is a pretty accurate name for it because they did incorporate a lot of that kind of like trippy, dreamy, indie kind of stuff in a way that I think is pretty new. I don't personally care for it, but I do respect it. Here's an example of one song that I like. You hear how much this sounded like Leeway or whatever and a lot of those other bands I just played. So I think it's actually cool that they're kind of borrowing that early 90s post-hardcore kind of sound because to be honest, I think that they're better songwriters than most of those bands were. Their songs are so catchy. They're almost like the little pump of post-hardcore that they're so simple but so catchy. Like every line from every song is a hook. And I think that's what was missing from a lot of those post-hardcore bands back in the 90s is like they had a cool sound, but most of the songs weren't actually that catchy. And I think that is what Turnstile is bringing to the table that's new and more important than anything else. I mean, there's so many bands that have a cool sound, but it doesn't matter because the music isn't catchy. And at the end of the day, if it's not catchy, who really cares? So I think Turnstile is innovated there for sure. This is my favorite song from the album. It's the most sort of straightforward hardcore, I think. But even then, like it's got that sort of signature Turnstile weirdness to it that I think is interesting and I, and I appreciate. Whatever those like synths and effects and stuff are, it's it's a little thing. It's not like anything super amazing, but even just adding that makes it a little bit weirder and more different than, you know, the bands that did this style 25 years ago. And I think that that is like something worth pointing out and appreciating. Here's the two step. And to the point about the sort of indie influences and stuff, uh, this is probably my personal least favorite song in the album, but uh, basically any rock band that wants to be successful should do the exact opposite of what I like because my favorite song on the album is always going to be the one that nobody else likes. The song I dislike the most because it sounds like the most kind of traditional rock is always going to be the one that everyone else likes the best. So basically you should do the exact opposite of what I like. And this seems to be a song that a lot of people really like from this album. To me, it sounds a little bit too much like the police for me to get into it. But again, I do appreciate that they went there, even though it's not my personal thing. I think it's cool that they went there. This is like 1975 meets the police or something, but weirder. This is not the song for me, but, um, you know, that's okay. I still appreciate it. I'm an old man. I am not their target audience. It's not important if I like this or not. I think it's cool that they're doing this. I mean, what if they just put out shit like their seven inch for the next 10 years? That would suck. Like they already put out 10 great hardcore songs. Should they put out a hundred? I would say no. I appreciate that bands try new things and push the limits of their sound and stuff. Whether I like it or not, I'm in favor of like anybody that just does something fucking weird. That's what I appreciate. I don't like it when bands play it safe. From a commercial perspective, it might make sense for bands to play it safe. But if I have my sort of artist hat on. I like it when people do weird shit. That's really what I appreciate the most about Turnstile and Angel Dust is their willingness to do weird shit. I also want to talk about why they are so successful within the world of hardcore. I mean, so they have like 700,000 Spotify listeners, which obviously isn't huge compared to pop or rap or whatever, but for hardcore, that's fucking huge. Why are they doing so well? Even though they're not like huge personalities necessarily, they don't like do weird, wacky shit for press. I think a big part of it is that they understand aesthetics better than, you know, 90% of bands in this genre. Like I said before, this is a cool video. I mean, especially for 2014, this felt very like on trend, felt like very relevant. They just have a lot of energy. Live, they're awesome also. Like if you go see them live, they fucking kill it. But just the fact that they put an extra kind of, you know, 50% into their aesthetics, that they have an aesthetic point of view that's not just the band playing in some fucking warehouse or whatever, all the shit that I always complain about. They always do something different and unexpected and weird, like having the dog and flowers and stuff. Even just that alone is interesting. And sort of this like early 90s funky alternative kind of aesthetic again that's different especially to an audience that you know didn't hear this stuff the first time around that's very different to them speaking of live so this is the show they did recently in baltimore their hometown i mean 
the fact that they made it look like this VHS video and that the people there look like this, just kind of being weird and stuff. Again, it's not straightforward hardcore. It's not straightforward indie. It's kind of somewhere in between. And so I can understand why that sort of aesthetic would appeal to people. Super high energy. Again, this is their hometown, so they're not going to play to this many people in, you know, Kansas City, probably. You know, this makes me feel like 1992 again. It makes me feel like I'm going to Lollapalooza or something like that, which is a cool time. Like, people liked that. This is when alternative rock was big and accessible and everybody got into it. Like, people got into bands like Helmet. For whatever reason, that was the time when weird alternative shit became mainstream. Turnstile is able to capture that feeling through their aesthetics and their sound and just their overall vibe and brings a lot of people together that normally wouldn't get into this kind of music. So I think that's a huge part of it. Like if you look at their merch, for example, this looks fucking cool. Like this just looks like some streetwear shit that some hype beast kid would wear, even if they didn't know it was like a band. Not all their older stuff is on here, but you can see like this sort of thing, this kind of reminds me of like an early 90s skateboard brand like New Deal or Toy Machine or something like that. This poster just has an aesthetic, you know, they have a creative vision that most hardcore bands and most kind of heavy bands in general don't. These socks are really cool, kind of like an off-white sort of vibe to them. So I think that they're able to kind of cross over a little bit with that sort of hype beast audience that, you know, hardcore sometimes can, but hardcore is a little scary. It's a little rough around the edges, you know, and Turnstile's music is polished and accessible enough, plus their aesthetic is polished and accessible enough that I think they're able to kind of halo in a little bit of that hype beast audience they also have did that tour with like suicide boys and city morgue and stuff whoever else they're able to bring in some of that audience some of the indie audience and i think that's a big part of why they're being as successful as they are and so my kind of question is where do they go from here you know there's people that keep telling me that they're going to be the next big thing that they're going to get all this mainstream success i think if that was going to happen it probably would have happened by now i don't think that they have a big enough star personality in the band to hit that level and i don't think that their music is you know the sort of thing you're going to hear on the radio or you know really yeah I, I i don't think they have what it takes to be mainstream at least not what i've heard so far and they've been a band for 10 years so i, th I think if they did it would probably happen by now but hey seven hundred thousand monthly listeners on spotify for a hardcore band is amazing you know and they're getting all this love from people like fantano and pitchfork and stuff like that that's awesome turnstile has been able to at least break that barrier and these guys definitely are like legit part of the hardcore scene no question about that so you wonder how many kids are going to get into turnstile because they read about it on pitchfork or heard fantano talk about it and maybe that's their gateway into hardcore you know i know this was like really long but people ask me about turnstile a lot just thought i'd provide a little bit of context for you about who they are where they came from what they're kind of drawing from and as far as like reviewing the album i would say you know go listen to it and decide for yourself you don't need me to tell you what to think of it that's up to you to decide hopefully in this segment, I at least just gave you a little bit of context so that when you do listen to it, maybe you're hearing it in a different way than people who didn't know this stuff. All right, that was a really fucking long Turnstile review. Hopefully we can edit that down into something shorter. That was that was a lot of talk about Turnstile, but people have asked me about it for a long time, so I just kind of wanted to get it all out there.